All right, g'day. Richard Musgrave Evans here and welcome back. Now, this is the studio series of finishing some of these plain air pieces. This one was done at Chambers Gorge in the Flinders Ranges. I like the piece, it was in evening light, late afternoon light probably is more correct. I was very pleased with the picture when I did it, which is quite often the case, but then when I got it home, not so pleased. Put it away, left it for ages, brought it out about a year later and thought, you know, it's not as bad as I thought. There's elements in it that are capturing what I felt on the day and what was right, what was what it was looking like on the day. There's just a few things now that I've seen that I reckon if I put them in, I can probably bring it out and finish the painting. And sometimes it takes that long. Sometimes you do a painting and not know what to do with it for a year, maybe two years, you think it's a piece of rubbish. But quite often that is not the case. It's just that you've been too closely associated with the piece and you've been too closely associating with what you saw on the day. Two years later, that all gets a bit hazy. You pull the painting out because you haven't seen it for that long and you go, oh, well, yeah, I can probably, I reckon I know what to do to make that a nice painting. And that's when you start. That's when you start working on it. You leave the painting for that long before you start working on it. If you look at a painting and you don't know what to do to fix it, but you go and try and fix it, guaranteed that plein air piece is going to lose everything that it had. You leave it for a year or two, all of a sudden you see what you want to do, mix the paint, do it, and quite often it can end up being one of your best pieces. So today I'm going to work on this one. What I reckon I'll do is, I've got the afternoon light coming across the painting, but everything's a little bit flat because there's not a lot of shadow. Most of it's lit up completely across the landscape all through this section. So I'm thinking you can just see a few traces of shadows here where the light is coming this way and just hitting the cliff faces and knocking a few shadows in. Well, what I'm going to do is just bring a couple more of them out so you get that effect of light and shadow, light and shadow as the sun ripples across. And I think that'll probably do it. So let's mix up some paint and get into it. No worries. Alright, so here we go. Now I've mixed up a little bit of paint while you weren't watching and uh, now I think we'll get into it. Just got a fe fairly medium size knife, not too big. Let's have a look. Is that showing what it is? Maybe that's better. Oh, there you go. Okay. Now, working with those shadows like I was talking about. Alright, so I'll start with a bit of blue and white. You can see that, yep, I'm not standing in the way. Now I notice it's very important to match the colours that I'm already using in there, otherwise when the painting dries it will look mismatch and two different paintings done on two different days. Definitely, your major priority is to match what you've already done. So I've whipped up some magenta and blue there. Let me just have a look. I think there's a touch of Viridian Green in that, so I'm going to throw it in just to knock the colour back because I'm using a bit of magenta and Viridian Green. When they mix together with the blue, it'll just knock the intensity of the blue off a bit. Okay, so now, like I said, what I want to do is just put a few extra shadows, but they've got to be randomly placed. They don't want you don't want them to be. Let's have a look at that tone. You don't want the shadows to be too monotonous. You want them to be an uneven pattern because nature very rarely has exactly the same chomp, chomp, chomp. It's always varying as it goes. Even if it's repetitive, it still has a lot of variety. And that's uh, repetition with variation. That can be quite a nice thing. The Flinders Ranges themselves have got a lot of that. They've got a lot of repetitious mountains as they roll off into the distance. But at the same time, no hill is the same as the next one. They've all got that bit of variety. And that's much more appealing to the eye. So in saying that, I don't want to get all these spaces. So I've always got to look back to make sure that I'm not... Let's pop some in there. I've actually got a smaller knife here too. Quite a small knife. Because some of these areas for the shadows are... Well... There's not a lot of room to manoeuvre in there, so... Let's 
going to pale it off a bit with a bit of white as it's receding further back. There we go, yeah. Now I'm just going to stand back and have a look what I've done. Yeah, that's okay. And I'll see. Just kind of darken a little bit again because I'm going for here. Sticking a bit more on there. And just here, I'll make it quite a big blob, I reckon. Let's have a look. All right. Okay, so now I'll do the distant hill just here, which is further away. So it's a little bit lighter in tone, with a bit more white. Maybe just a bit more blue, more, rather than having the magenta, it's got a cooler blue. Okay, what are we looking at here? A little bit darker, so I'll pull some of that other colour in. So, just catching the edge of the light like so. Dig a knife. We're doing a bit of a rock ledge here. Just feel it as you go. A bit darker, so I'm adding a bit more colours with less white to intensify and I'm purposely half touching here, dragging it across. That's a bit too dark. Let's go lighter. Purposely half touching to catch it dragging across the paint that's already dry. What it's doing is hopefully lighter, hang on. Giving the effect of light cap capturing, you know, light hitting all those random rocks. So it's not a complete straight line. There's, you know, light and shadow and patches. And dragging it can quite often do that. That's gone a little bit too magenta, but that's all right because you can half mix things. Okay. green to kill it off. There's less there's less um, saturation in the colours here, they're a little bit greyer so with the blue in magenta I've put a bit of green with it and that's just killed it off a bit. I'll just get my finger on that one. The Flinders Rangers themselves have a lot of uh, lateral... What the Flinders Rangers are, they're an ancient seabed that was completely flat. And layer upon layer of um, ancientness has built up over time on the seabed. Then what's happened is there's been an upheaval of the earth and it's pushed everything up on a weird angle like so. And then as the hills have been eroded away, you get all these different layers running down of different coloured rocks and sand over the ages. So there's a lot of strata coming through like so on angles in the flinders like this. You can see here, that used to all be flat and it's been pushed up. So it's good just to highlight some of those angles. Just feeling like, put a bit of brown to grey that one off. Feeling like I want a bit more, a little bit bigger through there for some reason. That's when you've got to go by feel. Sometimes you can talk it out, but other times you just got to you look at it and you go, oh, that needs a bit of this or that needs a bit of that. Sometimes it's experimenting to get it right. A bit more of that there. Right, now what I'll also do, I find 
little bit of paper towel somewhere. Just want to bung in a few of the, uh, what we've got here is you've got the ancient rocky cliff here, but what you've got is a dry water course that's running through here. There's no water in there at the moment, or well, there's patches of water, but not much. Uh, and that's basically what's built the gorge over the ages, Chambers Gorge. The water runs through and has cut all this away. But in saying that, we've got these lovely gum trees that are in amongst the edge of where the uh, creek runs. And so what I'm going to do is just uh, highlight like I've done here, just a couple more of where the light's actually hitting. So I'm going for a bit of a, uh, let's have a look, a bit of cat orange and white. Half mix it in. Let me go for a bigger knife too. Just half mix that. Stick a nice trunk in somewhere. Okay, now, let's see what I've got to do here. I've got a cat orange. But I'm gonna need a little bit more of a uh, cad yellow. Because that orange is just not cranking it. Just doesn't quite have the accent that I want. So I'll half mix the cad yellow and the white. bit of white in the centre where the light's really hitting the trunk like that. It's about random spacing again. You just feel the uh, energy where, oops, see that's a bit, uh, I don't think that's right, I might take that one off. Bit of paper towel and a finger. May need a bit more than that, we made a little bit of turps. Don't even know where I've got any. Okay, so I'm just going to take this off here. Take that paint off, what have we got here? Come off, you little beggar. Try and make a mess in the process. Just get that completely off. That's the thing about these sorts of paintings, you've got to, uh, you've got to give it and then you've got to take it away. Sometimes you have to uh, put the paint in, realise maybe that's not where it should go, then don't hesitate just to take some off. Like for example, the edge here, I might just with the edge of my finger, peel that a very clean, there's turps on this rag, Bit of turps on that and a clean finger. Just pull the clean edge so you can get the draftsmanship of the tree. Okay, what do we got here? A bit more white, a bit more yellow, half mix. Constantly standing back to see what I'm doing. Now this will look good here, I reckon, if I get my finger again like so and rub the bottom of that off. That can be a tree, that mark. I'll turn that into a trunk. So then I'll use some of my shadows. Nice pale shadow. Darker than that. Casting a nice shadow see across like so. There are some nice shadows here already. That one's maybe a tad dark, so 
now that I'm on that on that theme let's lighten it a bit lengthen that shadow just putting a few more shadows lying across the uh, bottom of the uh, the sand in that creek And what that's starting to do is suggest a flatness through this section. Okay, now, just here. Doing a bit of shadow in the foreground. Just got the knife on edge here. Creating a few shadows and edges. Slide that one. Take a bit of paint off the bottom of that. What that one might look good with is actually a smudge. Like get them, get this. Smudge that paint because it's the foreground. It's not so important because the foreground in this particular painting is just a lead-in for the distance. So quite often, if it's not the main event. You make it less in focus and with less less tonal contrast and less in focus. What that does takes your eye away from that section and takes it to the more important section. These pale blues are working quite nice on the edge of these uh, these banks here. So while they are working nicely, I'll keep going until I've overdone it and then once I've overdone it I'll just back it off a bit. Here again that one needs a smudge I reckon. Let's just get the rag and soften. Just a Getting the edge of the trees. I've got a bit more green in that. This is a little bit of gum tree stuff. I'm just with the blue. Just a bit of light catching on things. Well, not the light, sorry, the shadow on the light source. Plenty there. A bit heavy that one, I might go lighter. Something's just telling me it's not to be so dark in tone there. Now, by putting these light and shadows, what I'm starting to do is build up the feeling of a three dimensional surface instead of just, it was a bit flat like I said before. Just feeling, feeling. Sometimes you overdo it, and I may have just done that. If I have a look. Now that's going okay. Now, flat sandbank here. Edge of the uh, creek leading down this way, so the shadows are pointing down. The shadows are flat there because it's flat country. Some of this stuff's actually upwards, so I'm going to put the shadows this way. Let's have a look. couple of bits here like that you can go up because what's happening there is it's huh? right. <laughs> excuse me and that'll start depicting makes it look like there's bushes on this side creating those shadows upwards you start to get the feeling of which way the hill's flowing. So that green's working well, so I'm going to bung a bit more of that in here. So I'm half in mixing magenta and green there, that's a beautiful combination in the evening light. Just feeling as I go, you can intellectualise it as much as you like. But then, Quite often, just have to feel as you go. So 
So I'm trying to get a nice balance here. I'm constantly standing back because it's a very abstract thing I'm doing, but I'm using fairly realistic, well, realistic evening colours. We're not so much realistic day, daylight colours, but in the evening and morning, you can get really strong colours, particularly in the outback of Australia. So I can get to use a lot of colour and it looks very abstract, but if I get it fairly close on the right colours and tones of those days, you can get a beautiful combination between realism and abstract. That would have to be my favourite style of art. I like that. Here we go. Soft, that's it. He's catching my eyes a bit too much. He's a bit dark, that's the original one. He's a little bit dark, I reckon, so I'm going to slide her off a bit. They're not liking that much either, so it's, it could be, that's an accident. Some of the paint just came off this as I rubbed and went there, and I think I like it. One of those happy accidents. Applying more shadow on the banks. Now that's all good. That's starting to look um, a lot better in my mind, but at the same time, what I want to do is soften a little bit here and there. Let's have a look. Get a bit of draftsmanship, structure, and softness. The good old fashioned. Paper towel. You can get heaps of paint on yourself, which is not always a good thing, but oh well. Finger. Softening. some of that paint off if I can. Now, I'm going to mix up a bit of white and a bit of orange. Okay. Now it's got to be darker than that, way darker. Put a bit of burnt sienna in, in that orange. So that's what I'm trying to match the colours from the last painting session. There's a fair bit of burnt sienna with that orange. So I'm going to put that in to get it to match. At the same time I want it to jump a bit more than the original so going a couple of shades lighter. Hang on, that's not quite light enough. It's not quite popping like I want it to. Stand back and have a look. going on here? Let's get a little light on it. That's better. It's working, but you don't want to get too carried away. I might just soften some of that again. Soften that with my finger. Come in with the paper towel, give her a nice smudge like so. That's the foreground. Just a couple of accents here and there popping. Just gotta feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it.
Starting to get the feeling of light and shadow and rock now. A little bit more than I was anyway. Painting is all right, but looks what are we doing here? Stand back and have a look what I'm doing. Just trying to draw your eye in there a little bit, you see. Just trying to draw your eye, because it's an abstract pattern I'm painting here. Trying to draw your eye back into a certain area so it doesn't get too messy, because there's a lot of blobs. Blob, 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 blob. It can be very hard to read for your eye. So quite often what you got to do is you've got to order those blobs and colours. Like I was saying before, less important here, and that's dragging your eyes up here. A little bit more sharp, sharp accenting over here, and your eyes will get pulled this way. You'll see that's all right, but it's not what I want, so. What is that? Let's take a little puppy go like that. some clean abstract mark, mark there. Now whatever that is that I've just put there, I want to create a shadow from it. All very well and good, but the shadow's gone too fast. So what I'll do is just uh, Towel. Just take that edge of that off. Like that. Clean that edge. Might be a bit hard to see, I don't know, I think you can see. Just want to clean the bottom of that edge. Scoop along here. Now you can see that's probably about it. I mean, I could keep going and then uh, who knows what would happen. But what I've done is, uh, like I said, what I wanted to do is I already had the bright sunlight coming across. I just wanted to create the feeling of light and shadow to give more of a three-dimensional feel to the forms. So along here, I'll put all the shadows in, which is kind of catching on the edge of the cliff faces as, as they recede. In the flat sandy creek section, I've made the shadows lateral this way. On the uh, Flinders Ranges themselves, I've angled them. Coming down the hill here, the shadows are running down. On the other side, they're running up. All abstract marks, but putting them in the right order like that. Stand back. If you've got the colours somewhere right and you've got the shapes, you can give the illusion from a chaotic patch of colour into a feeling of light and shadow. All right, now, I hope you enjoyed what I've been doing. Let me know. This is the first of the series studio fix-ups, basically. Uh, of course, there's going to be a lot more of the plain air stuff as well. But I think it might be interesting, you're just seeing the way I can, the way I work. I mean, not everything, like I said, comes out perfect when you're outdoors. And so it's nice to sometimes to have a work and come back into it and do a bit to it. And it's a slightly different way of working. Uh, you're not just literally copying something you're trying to make a nice picture now I mean even when I'm outdoors painting plain air I'm not literally just copying everything duh, duh, duh. I'm copying the feel of the place but when you're at home it gets even more like that what you're trying to do is really get the essence of a well composed flowing pattern of color light and shade 
And so, like I said before, a year or two down the track, because the uh, original impression in your head is not quite as strong, you're looking more now at the picture itself and just wondering what you can do to make that particular thing you're looking at a nicer picture. And so, yeah, studio work has its place in plein air work, but don't get carried away. All right, until next time, thank you. Cheers. Okay, now just as I was packing up, I saw a couple of extra things. What I thought was, yeah, you've put some nice blue shadows and whatever else, but there's one thing you have done now. You've made everything a little bit harsh, and like I said before, something I didn't want to do, is I made a touch of it a little bit too repetitive through here, like too many evenly spaced blue shadows. So what I did is I just grabbed a rag, a turfsy rag, took a few of those shadows off, as well as just smearing a couple of extra pieces through here, for example, to soften a few edges. So I wanted the combination between hard and soft, rather than just getting hard and hard. Anyway, so it's not much, it's only like another minute's work, but what it's done is, I think, changed it and got it more on the look that I'm after. Anyway, we'll take it in for a close-up and you can see what you think. No worries. All right, now coming in, you'll see that, um, what I have got is these nice complementary coloured shadows here that I've put in, but what I've done is I've taken a few out here, softened some of the edges of those ones here, you can see with a nice soft smear mark there. You've got your nice horizontal shadows along here on the sandy creek bed to give the illusion a flatness there, rather than the shadows pointing down here to give the illusion of rolling into the uh, creek bed. Some of the nice close-up detail of the gum trunk is quite abstract, but if you get the general shape of a trunk, standing back, becomes the trees. Then we have the distance over there, those beautiful distant mountains with the light just licking across them. Getting into the magentas and whatnot. And there's your basic overall effect. Now that's about it, I wouldn't like to go any further uh, because it's a very broad and abstract painting, plain air to start with. There's no point in trying to finish off more than that because all you're going to do is lose the quality of spontaneity. There you go, afternoon light, chambers gorge. No worries, thank you.